give me seven days without added sugar and your brain, your sleep, and your cravings will change. Not because you have more willpower, but because your hormones and neurotransmitters finally stop being hijacked. Quick story, when I was a kid, making Kool-Aid meant scooping what felt like half the sugar canister into a pitcher. As an adult and as a doctor who lives carnivore, I don't keep sugar in my home at all. My wife has type 1 diabetes and if you spot anything sweet at the house, it's pure monk fruit, pure stevia, or maybe even allulose. Years ago, a patient who worked at a soda plant told me about a massive hopper that just poured sugar into the mixer. The sound never stopped. That image stuck with me. So today, I want to show you, day by day, what happens when that hopper turns off in your body just for one week. Tell me where you're watching from in the comments. And if you're in, type day zero, I'm in. In this video, you'll learn what typically happens each day of a seven day sugar break. What changes in your brain, gut, sleep, and hunger and stay to the end for a 60 second action plan and the number one mistake that makes cravings worse. This video is for my broader audience. Low carb vets, invite your friends. Let's continue to grow this metabolically healthy community. Removing sugar looks like this. Focus on foods with added sugar, sodas, juices, desserts, sweetened coffees, candy, most packaged snacks, and those so-called healthy bars with sugar disguised as cane juice, syrups, maltodextrin, whole fruit. I'll guide you in a minute. Let's get started. Day zero, let's set the stage. Clean the environment. If it's in your house, it's in your mouth. Remove obvious sweets and sugary drinks. A couple of thoughts about which dietary plan you will focus on. Number one, maybe low carb. Prioritize protein, eggs, meat, fish, full fat Greek yogurt if tolerated, non-starchy vegetables, and natural animal fats like lard, beef tallow, duck fat, or my bokeh oils which include butter, olive, coconut, and avocado. Total carbs less than 130 a day. Sounds high for my low carb crew, I know, but keep in mind that most Americans consume 250 to 350 carbs per day. Number two the keto curious, same as above, plus keep total carbs lower by skipping grains and avoiding most fruit. Carbs less than 50 total per day and less than 30 total carbs is even better. Number three, the carnivore curious, animal based for the week if you want it simple. Sweeteners, if you must use pure monk fruit or pure stevia, but know this, sweet taste can keep cravings alive. A cleaner seven days equals faster reset. Hydrate plus minerals. As insulin drops, you'll pee more sodium and water. So add a pinch of salt to water once or twice daily. Sleep plan. No screens the last 60 minutes before bed. Your brain will thank you on days two to three. All right, let's see what happens to your body every day of the week with no sugar. Day one, dopamine dip and the why I'm hungry moment. What's happening? Your brain has been getting quick dopamine hits from sweet taste. Remove the hits and your reward circuits get upset. Ghrelin, the I'm hungry hormone, nudges up while insulin begins to ease down. What you feel? Snacky, a little irritable, and your coffee tastes different. What to do? Eat protein first at meals. Add natural fats for satiety. Walk 10 to 15 minutes after meals to blunt cravings. Drink water with a pinch of salt if you feel blah. Here's a win to notice. You're now more aware of how often sugar was sneaking in. Day two, the glycogen drain and water drop. What's happening? Liver glycogen is depleting. Glycogen binds water. So as it goes down, you lose water and sodium. Hello keto flu if your minerals are low. What you feel? Headaches, a bit tired, maybe a mid-afternoon slump. You're peeing more. What to do? Salt your food. Broths help. Prioritize sleep. And if you have an apple-sized craving, eat an actual meal, not a healthy sweet snack. Here's another win to notice. Your belly feels a tad less puffy. 
rings fit looser. Day three, the craving crest. What's happening? Dopamine receptors start upregulating. Leptin satiety signals are trying to get through. The gut bugs, some of which prefer sugar, are complaining because their buffet just closed. What to feel? This is often the hardest day for cravings. Mood swings are possible. What to do? Remove decision fatigue. Pre-plan meals. Keep quick proteins on hand like boiled eggs, burger patties, smoked salmon. Do a 20 minute brisk walk or light workout to change brain chemistry now. Another win to notice. The first moment you realize a craving peaked and you overcame it. Day four, taste buds reboot, sleeps improves. What's happening? Sweetness sensitivity starts to reset. The same foods now taste sweeter. Lower evening insulin lets melatonin do its job. What you feel, less snacky, a bit clearer mentally, sleep may deepen. What to do, lean into simple meals. If you kept fruit, make it a whole food dessert. A handful of berries after dinner. Not an all day fruit fest. A win to notice. You enjoy savory again. Coffee needs less stuff in it. Day five. Steadier energy, calmer hunger. What's happening? Insulin is calmer. Your muscles are pulling in glucose more efficiently. GLP-1 and PYY, gut derived, I'm full signals, speak louder. What you feel? Fewer energy crashes. You can go four to five hours between meals without panic. What to do? Eat two to three actual meals. Avoid grazing on snacks. It keeps your brain thinking food is always coming. A win to notice. You're choosing, not chasing your next bite. Day six, your mood lift and inflammation nudge. What's happening? Less blood sugar volatility equals fewer adrenaline surges. Sodium potassium balance has stabilized. Many people report less joint stiffness and facial puffiness. What you feel? A more evening mood. Work feels slightly easier. What to do? Add a nature walk. Sunlight earlier in the day improves circadian rhythm and tomorrow's sleep. A win to notice. You're thinking about sugar less. And finally, day seven, metabolic momentum. What's happening? Triglycerides and fasting glucose don't fully normalize in a week, but you've lowered the sugar noise enough to measure improvements soon if you continue. Your reward system trusts you again. What you feel? Proud. Clearer, less controlled by the pantry. What to do next? Decide, extend 14 or 30 days, or reintroduce strategically. Common questions. Can I have fruit? For a sugar break, keep it minimum and whole. Think a small serving of berries after dinner. If cravings roar, pause fruit for the seven days. What about honey or agave natural sugars? Your pancreas can't tell the difference. Added sugar is added sugar. Artificial sweeteners, if sweet taste keeps you chasing more, skip them this week. If you do use one, choose pure stevia or monk fruit and keep it tiny. Wanna be tired without sugar? Energy comes from what you ate yesterday and the stored fuel you carry. Lower insulin lets you access the fat fuel you've been holding on to. Here's a quick pit stop. If this is helpful, tap like so more people see it. And if you've already started your low carb journey, share in the comments when you start it. All right, here's my 60 second action plan. Number one, purge and prepare. Remove sugary drinks, desserts, healthy bars. Number two, protein first. Each meal has a palm or two of protein. Add natural fats. Number three, hydrate plus salt. A pinch in water once or twice daily during the first three days. Number four, walk after meals. 10 to 15 minutes to steady blood sugar and curve cravings. Number five, sleep window. Screens off 60 minutes before bed. Cool, dark room. Number six, whole fruit boundary. Optional, whole, small, and after dinner only. Number seven, no guilt. If you slip, the next bite is your reset. All right, as promised, the number one mistake people make. Do not replace sugar with fake sugar all day. Your tongue might be fooled. 
but your brain's reward wiring stays lit up and cravings stick around. Use sweeteners sparingly or not at all for the week. Now, here's my gentle medical note. This content is for education, not personal medical advice. So if you use insulin or medicines that lower blood sugar, especially with type 1 diabetes or type 2 on insulin or using sulfurureas, talk to your clinician before changing your carb or sugar intake to avoid low sugars. This counts for blood pressure meds too. Safety first. Now, let me say this. You don't need perfect genetics or a perfect kitchen. You need seven days of better inputs. It's time to shut off the sugar hopper and your brain, hormones, and habits realign. This isn't punishment. It's permission to feel like you again. Start with one clean pantry, one real meal, one evening walk. Stack those wins. Your future self is already thanking you. That's why I'm so grateful you came to this video. So if you found it helpful, subscribe and share this with one person who needs a seven day reset. And as we close, I can't wait to see you on day four when your taste buds start cheering for you.